this journey begins personally in the solitary place, and then it'll extend uh, corporately. I'm talking about transformation. So we have to get hungry for things we have never, we have not experienced before. Okay? So you should never let your hunger for the newness of God fizzle out. Because then you become, as we taught about this weekend, then you just become religion, religious, or you get complacent, and complacent Christians are miserable. Okay? There's no fire. There's no passion. There's no drive. Complacency. And if you stay complacent long enough, you can fall off. It's true. You can fall away. And so we're going to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And we're going to start with verse 1. And we're going to read quite a, quite a bit of this chapter together. Amen. It says, When I came to you, brethren, I did not come with superiority of speech or of wisdom, proclaiming to you the testimony of God. For I determined to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my message and my preaching were not in persuasive words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power so that your faith would not rest on the wisdom of men, but on the power of God. Yet we do speak wisdom among those who are mature, a wisdom, however, not of this age. He said, not of the rulers of this age who are passing away. He said, but we speak God's wisdom in a mystery. The hidden wisdom which God predestined before the ages to our glory, the wisdom which none of the rulers of this age has understood. For if they had understood it, they would have not crucified the Lord of glory. But just as it is written, things which eye has not seen and ear has not heard and which have not entered the heart of man, all that God has prepared for those who love him. He said, for to us, God revealed them through the spirit for the spirit searches all things, even the depths of God. He said, for who among men knows the thoughts of a man except the spirit of a man, which is in him. Even so, the thoughts of God, no one knows except the spirit of God. Now we have received not just, he said, the spirit. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, so that we may know the things freely given to us by God. Things, he said, we also speak not words taught by human wisdom, but in those taught by the spirit, combining spiritual thoughts with spiritual words. Then he says, but a natural man does not accept the things of the spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. He could not understand them because they are spiritually appraised. But he who is spiritual appraises all things, and yet he himself is appraised by no, he said, by no one. And the last verse says, he says, for who has known the mind of the Lord that we will instruct him? He said, but we have what? The mind of Christ. The mind of Christ. There is a transformation in the power of the Holy Spirit that God has for you. And I know you've been growing and I know that things are happening, but I'm telling you, there is a transformation that God desires to do in you that you haven't tasted yet. Come on. Why? Because you're hungry. Because you haven't got cold, you haven't got complacent, and you have a desire for the things of God. And when you're hungry and you're thirsty, guess what? He feeds you and he gives you drink. Amen. So these, this, this transformation is by the Spirit. Paul is speaking everything he said. It's by the Spirit of God. And I love what my brother was saying. If you're born again, get filled with the Holy Ghost. Get filled with the Spirit. Because then God can reveal some things to you. That word transformation means to change into another form. In Romans 12, 1 and 2, it says, Do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the what? Renewing of your mind. How do you do that? By the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
by the word of God, getting in and the Holy Spirit breathing on the word of God and transforming and changing your life. He said, don't be conformed, he said, to this world. Okay, he said, he said, so that you prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. And so a transformation so great that entire communities and nations come under one God. Wouldn't that be wonderful? It can happen. Mm -hmm. And guess what's it's happening all over the world where people are coming to God and there's transformation in cities just because you don't see it the way you, they may be seeing it. God is working and moving to transform some things by his spirit. Mm -hmm. So that means if he does these things by his spirit, I just read where the natural mind can't understand it. We can't figure it out. How are you going to do that? What was God saying earlier? He says he, he's answering prayers. He's answering prayers in this season. How's God going to do it? It doesn't, it's none, that's none use. By the spirit, he's going to do it. Amen. That's where we get in trouble because we go down here into our carnal thinking and we think we know more than God and how God should move here and how God should do that and what God should do there. Get off the seat of control. Get out of the wheel. Let God have the wheel. Come on now. Our job is to rest in him. Right. Our, our job is to rest in God is to believe, is to stay in faith, abide in the word, and watch him do the transformation. Amen? So many people allow fear to come in because you're, you're letting your mind be conformed to this world. There's either fear or faith. You can walk in. There's a kingdom of God or the kingdom of darkness. You have a choice, right? And so I'm staying in faith in the kingdom of his dear son. It says all things are possible, so I believe it. People say, well, you're just, you know, you're just a dreamer. Yes, I am. I believe all things are possible. I believe that he's answering prayers. Amen. And nobody can change my mind. A transformation so great that entire communities and nations come under the headship of Jesus. It can happen. So to renew your mind means I must think like God. Okay. Say, well, how can I think like God? Because you have the mind of Christ. So you have two sets of eyes, don't you? Hmm. <laughs> you have your spiritual eyes, praise the Lord, that are getting more and more enlightened. They're, God's opening your spiritual understanding, your spiritual eyes. Then you have the carnal eyes. And then you have your spiritual ears, praise God, and they've been opened. Many of you have heard things that you've never heard before. And you may have you may have heard a scripture, but all of a sudden you hear the scripture. Come on, that happens to me a lot. You may hear, but then you hear, right? That's why Jesus would say, he who has an ear, let him hear. He said that over and over again. And Jesus was speaking to multitudes of people. He who has an ear to hear, let him hear. Right. So apparently they were they were listening to what he was saying, but they could not hear what he was saying. Isn't that something? But we have ears to hear. Amen. So we re, uh, re, the, to, to renew the mind <laughs> is that we must think like God. So we have the mind of Christ through his spirit. The word of God is the will of God. OK. What is the will of God? Have you read the Bible? I want to know what God is saying. Have you read the word? Because the word is living. The word is alive. It's for us today. It's not just an ancient book sitting on a shelf. He's alive. Amen. He's the living bread. And so the word of God is the will of God. So we we're talking about this transformation that needs to happen. We have to agree with God's word. We agree with the prophets and we will prosper. Prophets have spoke many words. We receive those words when they're from the Lord. Amen. And we agree with the word. The time frame of words is up to the Lord. But we agree and we receive those words. Amen. And we, re and we believe the word of God. 
So the church must move from its inherited maintenance mode because that's what most churches do. They get saved. I'm a joint heir with Jesus. Praise the Lord. And they just sit down and they don't do anything, right? They just sit down and it's like, okay, I'm saved now. So I'm on my way to heaven shouting glory and that's enough. But that's not the will of the Lord for you, okay? The will of the Lord is for you to be born into the kingdom. And once you get born again into the kingdom, he does that for you. But then the king expects something back out of you mm -hmm. to do the work of the Lord, to do his work. Right. And so you got to move from inherited maintenance mode into their journey of mission. OK, mission, intuition and practice. So the word intuition means a direct perception of truth. So I'm going to read the definition in that sentence so we can hear and see. Amen. So the church must move from its inherited maintenance mode into their journey of mission, direct perception of truth, fact, and independent of any reasoning process and practice. Okay, that means that you're moving out of I'm just maintaining my walk. God is good. I got everything I need for me. As long as I'm blessed, mine and me is blessed. I'm good. I don't want to look over there and see what's going on in the world. Come on. I don't want to look over. I don't want to hear those bad reports. Mm -hmm. That's maintenance. That's not what he saved you for. Okay, to be a spiritual maintenance man. That's not what he called you to do. So we have to we have to move out of that way of thinking. I remember when we had all these uh, people in the house that said they were evangelists. I remember that. Do you remember that day? Ever, leaders, you remember that? The whole place, man. There are several come up here. All right. Okay. That's all I'm going to say. So we move from maintenance, just maintaining right here. We have to get mission minded and practice yes we are a mission church abroad but guess what there's missions right here at home and we do missions at home but there's missions in our community come on there's things in the community that need changed there's things right where we live he has us right here in the midwest and we have we have hannibal we're reaching into jefferson city and all of these counties here and abroad we got work to do Come on. So in order to have to to have this direct perception of truth, you have to see that God, the journey of mission is a is not just a, you know, God just asking you. God told us to go. OK, he didn't say, can you please go into all the world? Can you please go save some people? Can you please go? He didn't say that. He said, go ye into all the world, right? He said, go forth. He said, I've commissioned you. He said, I've called you. I've commissioned you. I've empowered you. I gave you authority over the power of the enemy. Go ye therefore. Make disciples of nations. Amen. So we're born into the kingdom to do something for the king. So you got to become a doer of the word. That means you say, well, I don't know a whole lot, but you know something. You know, Jesus, we sang about him, right? Jesus, Jesus crucified, right? Come on now. Died on a cross, rose again, the salvation, the king of glory, the Lord of lords. You got something to say. And many of you have so many gifts inside of you. You got healing gifts. You got all kinds of gifts in there. You got words of knowledge and all of those things. People need it out there. See, a lot of times with church maintenance, what happens if you're just if you're just inherited maintenance, you keep all your gifts right here in the four walls. Mm -hmm. And when you're on the job or you're out at the school or you're here, you're there, you're just kind of quiet and you just I'm just maintaining. But then you come to the church building, which we are the church. We know that. But you come inside of four walls and then people really want to do something. But guess what? We need a move of God out there. 
We need a move of God when we're sitting at the, the restaurant and our waitress needs Jesus. Come on now. We need a move of God. She needs a word of knowledge. He needs a, he needs a word. He doesn't even know the Lord. He doesn't even know Jesus loves him, right? I feel like I'm spanking, but I'm really not. Please don't take it like that. Challenging you. I'm challenging you because to much is given, much is required. We have been given so much. Doers of the word, equippers, trainers, and reproducers. Mm -hmm. So what gift you have, guess what? You should be, you should be imparting. You should be helping other people. You're a called when you're a part of uh, apostolic prophetic people, they equip, train, and reproduce. Equip, train, and reproduce. Send them out. Equip, train, and reproduce. Amen. So if you're just coming in, guess what? You're going to be equipped and you're going to be trained and you're going to reproduce yourself. That's how it is in the kingdom of God. Remember? In the kingdom of God. So we must have the vision of the Lord for our communities and our nation. So I'm believing in the days ahead that there's going to be some downloads concerning community. Concerning communities. God's already moving. He's been moving and working and doing things right here in our midst. But we need the vision of the Lord. How are we going to possess our inheritance? Come on. How are we going to do it? How are you going to do it? Because if I read right, you know, if you go back and you look in numbers, when they were sent in to possess a land, God was with them. His presence and his purpose was there, was with them, but they had to go get it. They had to go possess it. They had to, what, take it. And so the vision, the act or power of anticipating that which will or may come to be. Okay. So what is the vision? It's, it's the act or power. We anticipate what God has spoken. We know that we know it is so. Nobody can take it from you unless you lay it down or give it up. Because God spoke it to you, it is yours. Mm -hmm. It is yours. And so when you have gifts and when you have these talents and abilities and these things that God wants to use for, for his glory, You'll not be satisfied trying just to work in the natural out there in gifts in the world. It's for the kingdom. Come on now. He'll use you out there, but I'm telling you, your gifts are for the king. So you don't let nobody buy your gifts. You don't let nobody pimp your gifts out there. No, it's for the king. Amen. There's a purpose for what God has put inside of you the talents and the abilities. Jose 4, 6 says God's people perished for lack of knowledge. Yeah, they rejected God's word, right? So they perish. Proverbs 29, 18, he says there where there is no vision, no prophetic revelation is what that vision means. The people perish, but happy is he who keeps the law. So where there is no vision, no prophetic revelation for your life, guess what? People perish and they cast off restraints. There's a lot of people, they don't have the vision of the Lord for their lives. So what do they do? They live lawlessly. They live in rebellion. They do a lot of things because they don't know who they are yet. They, they don't know who they are. So they're in bondage to a lot of things. And so they, they wander aimlessly and they go another direction because they don't have any prophetic revelation. Who am I? Why am I in this earth? What am I doing here anyway? Why did God even send me into the world? And some people, it's sadly say, they go through so much, they don't even want to be here, right? They're, they regret the day they were born. The devil is a liar. God put life in them and purpose in them. So they need a prophetic revelation of who they are. And it begins with salvation. Come on now. It begins again, people saved. Presenting the gospel, right? You present the gospel to them. They receive Christ. And all of a sudden, guess what? They get a revelation because the spirit of God comes in there. And then they begin to understand, maybe, maybe I do have a purpose. Maybe there is something for me, right? Praise the Lord. See, we're all ministers of reconciliation. 
You say, well, I don't, I'm not a five-fold minister. I'm not a preacher. You're a minister of reconciliation because you've been born again. And now you reconcile other people too, right? Some of the greatest stories in the Bible were those that just shared their testimony. They never had a pulpit ministry or nothing, but they had a testimony. <laughs> and that testimony went out and it, and it changed villages. It changed people's lives. Look at the Samaritan woman. She, she meets the real Jesus. She gets born again and she goes in, come see a man. That told me everything I ever did. And she begins to tell her story. The demoniac man that got deliverance and got all that freedom. And he wanted to jump in the boat and go with Jesus and be one of them. He said, oh, no, no, go tell your testimony. Go tell your testimony. And many people come to Christ and have hope because we open our mouth and we share the goodness of God. You don't have to be so schooled in scriptures. Tell your story. Come on now. We all have a story. <laughs> we all have things that God has done. And so we, we want to see transformation in our communities. Tell your story. Make sure you're walking right because you'll get some backlash if, you, if you're not. You better make sure you're walking what you're talking. Come on now. And we do that in here. <laughs> So vision, we need the vision. Vision is foresight with insight based on hindsight. That means my seeing is by the spirit of God through experiences of life. Yeah, a part of the vision. I've went through something. See, we want to know what's God have for me. Walk with him a while. Mm -hmm. Walk with him through the hard places. You'll get a vision. Come on now. We just want sometimes the good things, you know, but the truth is count it all joy because even the bad places, the bad places do the deepest transformation in us. And it's only bad to your flesh. Because God is perfect in all his ways. So when we're walking through hard places and we go through, you know, these trials and tribulations and all of these things, our flesh don't like it. But he said, consider it joy. He said, consider it joy when you're in that hard place because now you're getting a vision. <laughs> you didn't have a vision until you started going through that. Ministry is birthed out of your hard place. We despise the hard place, but I'm telling you, ministry is birthed out of that. God does not waste anything in our life. Nothing is wasted in the kingdom. Nothing good, bad, ugly. He uses it all for his glory. That's not a fairy tale scripture. It is true. And I'm telling you, the hard places you want a vision, walk with him because my seeing by the Spirit of God through experiences of life. Another word for vision, another definition is something seen or otherwise perceived during such as an experience, such an experience, all of a sudden, you know, you get the vision as you're walking through. And many times we're going through hard places because God wants you to see another revelation of Jesus. Those really, really hard places, you know, where you, where you like, how, why did I ever fall into that? Man, I saw the mercy of God. How he took me out of the miry clay. He took us up out of that and he set us on a rock. Come on now. You would have never, we sang about his mercy today. You would have never known him like that. And what does that bring to your life? A deeper intimacy and a fear and a reverence for God. See, that's why your testimony is so powerful. So don't let the devil sh try to bring shame or, or condemnation on you because you went through something. Praise God, he brought you out. Come on now, somebody needs to hear it. Somebody needs to hear it because there's people that are on the verge of giving up. Come on now, losing hope, suicidal and everything else because they don't think God even loves them. Mm -hmm. Or they think their life can never change. Everybody has a testimony, amen? 
So hindsight is a recognition of the realities or the possibilities or the requirements of a situation, event, a decision, etc. after it occurs. So when you're talking about vision, when we go through these things, there is an, a, a wisdom that is applied to our life. There is a wisdom that you can't get from a book. <laughs> Only the Bible, but not another book. Come on now. You gain that wisdom through these life experiences. Mm -hmm. You gain the wisdom and you get a vision. It's beautiful. You gain the wisdom, you get a vision. It's the ability to understand after something has happened what should have been done or what caused the event. And so there's a release of wisdom for you to understand your purpose. Praise God. And you had to walk through it. You had to walk through the hard place. You had to walk through hard things. Come on now. God already knew. Remember, he's the author and the finisher of you. He knows just how stubborn you can be. Hello. <laughs> he knows you're hard headed sometimes. He knows you got some, you know, some fears and some insecurities, but he filled you anyway. Isn't that wonderful? He filled us anyway. And so he knows the things that we're going through and what needs to happen so we can get this understanding. So people that have a prophetic vision have revelation of the will and the purpose of God. Mm -hmm. They carry the burden of the Lord. See, when you get really get a vision of purpose, you will have the burden of the Lord come in your life. Because when you really get the vision of God and you allow him to transform you, you realize that it's not all about you. Come on. Because when, you're, when you don't have the vision, it is about me all the time. Me, 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 me. But when he transforms me and I really get a hold of him and I come through some things and I get this revelation, man, I'm going to sacrifice for the king now. I'm going to give him something back because he's been too good for me not to. He's been too good. He's brought me out. And so now I begin to look outward. I'm not looking inward anymore, right? I'm not going to stay in maintenance mode anymore. No, I'm mission minded right now. I'm on a mission, the mission of the king. Come on now. Hallelujah. God is speaking to you. They carry the burden of the Lord. Praise God, Isaiah 41, 10. And that burden of the Lord is for transformation, to transform cities, nations, your own life, your families. Come on. 41, 10 says, do not fear for I am with you. He said, do not. He said, let's go there. Can't even read my writing. Hate to say that, but it's true. <laughs> it just happens to me all the time. Isaiah 41, we said yesterday it's okay to laugh in church because we are the church. Come on now. Don't be religious today. Guys, you guys act like you're tired today. <laughs> 41.10, do not fear for I am with you. Do not anxiously look about you for I am your God. He said, I will strengthen you. Surely I will help you. Surely I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. You see that? He says, look, don't fear. He said, I am with you. I will uphold you. I will keep you. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter one. All these awesome scriptures here. Jeremiah had the right vision. Mm -hmm. He had the right vision. God was pleased with what he saw. So let's ask ourselves, is God pleased with what you see? Is God pleased with what you speak? Come on, about your situation, about the surroundings, about what's going on. What? How do you see things? Jeremiah 1 verse 11. The word of the Lord came to me saying, what do you see, Jeremiah? And I said, I see a rod of an almond tree. Then the Lord said to me, you have seen well, for I am watching over my word to perform it. 
Amen. The word of the Lord came to me a second time saying, what do you see? And I said, I see a boiling pot facing from the north. Then the Lord said to me, out of the north, the evil will break forth on the inhabitants of the land. For behold, I am calling all the families of the kingdoms of the north, declares the Lord, and they will come and they will set each one his throne at the entrance of the gates of Jerusalem and against all the walls around about and against all the cities of Judah. I will pronounce my judgments on them concerning to all their wickedness, whereby they have forsaken me and have offered sacrifices to other gods and worship the works of their own hands. Now look what he says. He, he, he's seeing right. God is pleased with what he sees. And he says, now gird up your loins and arise. That means your mind. Gird up, gird up your loins, arise and speak to them. All which I command you do not be dismayed before them. He said, or I will dismay you before them. Now behold, I have made you today a fortified city and a pillar of iron and as walls of bronze against the whole land to the kings of Judah, to the princes, to the priests, to the people of the land. He said, they will fight against you, but they will not overcome you. For I am with you to deliver you, declares the Lord. That's a good word, isn't it? Guess what? It's still living today. I received that word today. Come on. It's a living word. So Jeremiah would receive a message to speak. God asked him, what do you see? Isn't that something? He asked him the question, what do you see? But he had to see. And so we're no different before we can make an impression upon another person's heart. You see, it takes the anointing to bring change, right? You need your eyes anointed. It takes anointing to see and to hear what God is saying and what he's doing. You must have an impression made upon your own heart. So words, our words have power. So when I'm in the presence of, the God, of God and I'm worshiping the Lord and I begin to see what God is seeing, then I, I can begin then to speak what he is saying. And I can speak what I see and someone else will see it too. You understand what I'm saying? Someone else will see it. So you got to be able to say concerning the truth, I see it. God was pleased with what he said before you can speak it so that the hearers can see it. See, it's a spiritual thing. We try and make things natural, but I'm telling you, when God uses your gifts and he uses your spiritual perceptions, it is just that. It's spiritual. There's impartations, there's anointings, and there's things that are exchanged into people's hearts and into their lives that they didn't know. But when you see it, and you're on the job, and you're out on the street or wherever, and God shows you something about someone and shows you a vision, and your heart is love. Come on now. You need to be walking this out in love. But he shows you these things, and you begin to release what you see and what God told you to say. There's a spiritual impartation to people. Come on, many of you have keys inside your spiritual pockets. <laughs> you got keys to people. Do you know that our anointing is connected to souls? It's true. We have different, we have the same spirit, the same father, the same faith. But I'm telling you, we have different gifts. We're diverse in here. We're connected to different kinds of people different groups of people, and our anointing is connected to souls, right? And so there's people that you're assigned to where you work and where you live. There's missions, there's places he sends us. You, you know, it wasn't an accident. Sometimes we think it is that he put us in a certain family. Come on, let's tell the truth. We're like, oh. but anyway, no, it was God's design. It was God's design. It was God's plan for us to be in there. So you have, you have keys inside of you. You have a weaponry. There's people that will not go to hell because you got a key in your pocket. Come on. That's real. Because you have to open your mouth, don't you? 
You got to begin to open your mouth. You got to see as God sees. God was very pleased with Jeremiah. And God said to him, you see well. What a, what a compliment that God would say, you see well. What? He saw it and knew it was a branch of an almond tree. Right? So Jeremiah's first lesson was simple. The significance of the almond tree was very important. And it's worth repeating. The almond was well known as the first tree to bud in the spring. Okay? It indicated that God was ready to quickly fulfill his word. What was he saying during worship? I have answered prayers. Come on. That God was ready to quickly fulfill his word. It was a promise guaranteed through the vision he saw. So you see how God uses these visions. He uses these things that he shows us. He's speaking to us about some things. <laughs> That's why he gives us dreams. That's why he speaks to us in visions and all of those things, because he's trying to get something to us, an understanding of who he is. Amen. And so he, the first thing to come up was that was that almond tree. And so he's like, mm, you did good. You saw right because I'm going to fulfill my word speedily. And so the Hebrew word for almond tree is close to and comes from the Hebrew word watchful. I was sharing with uh, intercessors, you have an assignment to watch. <laughs> you need to be watching. What is God seeing? What, is, what are you seeing through God? Come on. It was a word picture to Jeremiah that God is watching over his word to what? Fulfill it. To fulfill it. That's why we need the, the constant river and flow of the Holy Spirit in here through, through our personal life and corporately. Isaiah 66, 9 is a promise. Shall I bring to the pain of birth and not cause it to bring forth? Shall I who calls to bring forth shut the womb, says God? God is not double-minded. He said, I'm, I'm not going to shut the womb when it's time for that baby to come forth. I'm not going to do that. So as he's transforming us, he's like, I'm going to finish it. I'm going to complete what I have begun. And so Jeremiah could see correctly because he could see correctly. God could now work with him to release the word of the Lord, his plans and purposes. And we know it got a little heavier, didn't it? What he saw, he saw judgment, he saw a lot of things, but look how God, how, how the Lord just step by step, you see. Because the Bible says he gives us gifts and talents according to our ability. So, you know, the enemy, it amazes me how he trips people up, you know, and gets them blocked and hindered because they're afraid of the big picture. And God says, just take a little step here. <laughs> I just want you, I just want you to step out. I just want you to do, you remember what he told when they were in the boat and, and Peter wanted to come out where Jesus was on the water. Jesus is walking on the water. They didn't even recognize him. It's a ghost. They were terrified. And then they realized what was going on when he said, Hey, no, it's me. Come on. It's me. Don't be afraid. I'm out here on the water. I know you haven't seen this before. Mm -hmm. You see, in the beginning, we talked about that. And we have to be hungry for something we haven't seen before. If you're not hungry for something you haven't seen before, you can just scratch out the supernatural in your life. You can just throw that out. So you need to be expecting some supernatural things or else we get religious. We have the spirit of God. He's living. He's alive. He can bring these things to birth. Come on. So here's Peter. If it's you, Lord, bid me to come. You know, and what did Jesus, one word, come. Come on out here, Peter. Come on. Yeah, if it's you, he had a question, you know, but he still came out. He stepped out and it worked for a while, didn't it? Until he began to look at his situation. And that's what happens in the body of Christ. Many people start off strong and they fizzle out. 
because they let the things around them and fears and intimidation, insecurities, all these things around their life, it causes them to shrink back and disregard the what word of the Lord. Remember, what do you see? Peter apparently saw himself walking on the water. He wouldn't have got out the boat. And he saw Christ there and he didn't just see Christ, but he heard him. <laughs> he heard him speak. No one else got out with Peter. He got out by himself. Come on. And God used that as a powerful tool and example for us. You know, we step out of the boat. Many of you have already done that. You've been stepping out of the boat. Many people are first time people ever getting delivered and getting free, clean, what, going to school, all kinds of firsts, right? Because you're a pioneering people, amen? And so he stepped out and God blessed him to be able to do the things he did. And Peter could have continued to walk, but he got distracted, right? So don't be getting distracted in this season. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 23, 18. It says, but who has stood in the counsel of the Lord that he should, we should, that he should see and hear his word, who has given heed to his word and listen. You notice he put and listen, it's Jeremiah 23, 18. So who has stood in the counsel of the Lord? That means in his presence, you know, you're in prayer, you're in worship in that place. So we can see and hear his word. So when, when you're in worship, you're not just hearing the Lord, you're seeing something. <laughs> I believe you can't separate your seer and your hearer in the spirit realm. Your spiritual eyes and your ears are connected in the spirit. Now, some of you may have a stronger a sense in the spirit in a certain way you see or you hear, but I'm telling you, you're going to see something and you're going to hear something. You're going to hear something and you're going to see something. Because they're connected. Amen. And so he said, who has given heed to his word, but then listened. So we hear a lot of things, but do we hear? Are we listening and then producing what he said? Are we working toward what he's put in my spirit? Or are we still waiting for this great big whatever time to do it? I'm telling you, now's the time. Now is the time to be busy about the kingdom. Open your mouth and speak what God is saying. Isaiah 55, 10 and 11. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there without watering the earth and making it bare and sprout and furnishing seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so will my word be which goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty without accomplishing what I desire and without succeeding in the matter for which I sent it. Now you notice he said, my word, my mouth. Who's in us, Christ? So when we're, when we're speaking his word, he uses this vessel, but it's him. So the results are his too. So many times we're, we get insecure and we're afraid we're going to, you know, we're afraid they're not going to hear us or they're not going to listen or whatever. The results are the Lord's, right? Because they did reject Jesus many times in the Bible, but it didn't move Jesus out of his assignment. He, they, when they rejected Jesus, he just kept on moving, didn't he? He, he didn't get distracted and, and Jesus didn't run after rebellious people. He didn't. He didn't. No. People came to Jesus. He ministered to them. He went around doing good, healing all that was oppressed of the devil, right? We know that. God was with him and he did all these things. But I'm telling you, Jesus didn't beg people to follow him. Never do you see Jesus begging anyone. Mm-mm. He actually says if they left you, they really weren't with you anyway. Right? That's what he said. They might have been there just in body, but not connected in the spirit. Okay? And that's what happened. And in, in, in you see that happen. So, so the results, stop worrying about the results of things. That worry is a sin. Stop worrying about, did God hear me? Yes, he heard you. He's not deaf. 
God can hear. Did God hear me? Is he really working? Of course he's working. Why? Because his name is faithful. <laughs> is God going to provide? Well, yes, he's going to provide. He's the provider. It might not come the way you think or the way you planned it, but it will come. Come on now. It will come because his word will not return to him void. Come on now. Can talk and two walk together lest they be agreed? Let's go to Joshua. Appreciate y'all. You're, you're walking today with me. I know it's been a long weekend, but you're doing good. Praise God, because this word's getting in you. He's stirring you up. Amen. Joshua 1. Hallelujah. Joshua chapter 1. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' the servant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, cross the Jordan, you and all his people, to the land which I am giving to them, the sons of Israel. He said, every place on which the sole of your foot treads, I have given it to you as I've spoken to Moses. So that word treads is battles, right? So you have some battles and some things to contend with where you live. Come on. The ministry you're called to. The workplace. Wherever the marketplace, wherever it is God has put in you, he says, I am with you. I have given it to you, but your foot's going to have to tread. Treading is a marching. It's a militant. It's, it's battles. Okay. There's some battles, but he said, don't be dismayed. Remember Isaiah, he said, I am with you <laughs> from the wilderness and from Lebanon. He said, even as far as the great river. Euphrates and all the land of the Hittites, as far as the great sea toward the setting of the sun, will be your territory. He said, no man will be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Just as I have been with Moses, I will be with you. He said, I will not fail you nor forsake you. He said, be strong and courageous. He said, for you shall give this people possession of the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Now you notice he said, Joshua, you shall give them this. So the blessing of the Lord for the children of Israel, come on now, look at that, was connected to the obedience of his servants. You think, you, you think oh, my purpose don't matter and my little, my little calling. Oh, yeah, it does. Because it's really a great calling. Mm -hmm. And some people won't come in and possess their promised land unless you go before them and do some treading uh, for them and bring them on in. It's true. They're not going to find it. How did you find it? Somebody wore it for you. I know somebody had to pray for me. Come on. You have to go before. You have to go before them. He says, look, I'm going to be with you. He, he said, no one is able to stand before you all the days of your life because you know who you are. You know you have an angelic host with you. You know the greater ones inside of you. Here we are in the new covenant today, right? Jesus said, we are one. I am in you. I am with you. You have my spirit. You have authority over the power of the enemy. He says, you can tread. He used that again, didn't he, in the New Testament. He said to here to Joshua in the new covenant, he says, you're going to tread upon serpents and scorpions over all the power of the enemy and nothing will harm you. So what do you see? How you see yourself today? How you see yourself? Because, you know, when they were going in to possess it in numbers, only Joshua and Caleb had a good report. Even though God was there, they tabernacled with God and all of that. They murmured and complained. They said, that's a beautiful land and a vision right there. I really would like to obtain all of that. But we're just little grasshoppers. There's too many giants, too much work. Too much work. That's what's missing today is laborers. Laborers are workers. Mm -hmm. Laborers put their hand to something and they're doing something for the king. They labor in prayer. They labor with their resources. They labor. Uh huh. They work. They get a little sweaty. They get tired sometimes. But then they get filled back up with the Holy Ghost. Come on. Labors are few, Jesus said. So Joshua had divine positioning. 
Think about that. He was right there with Moses. Divine positioning. And he had a promise and he had a presence of God upon his life to take the land. He was victorious. He had everything that he needed. And you know what? The Bible says God gives us everything we need that pertains to life and godliness. Everything we need, God has given it to us. But we have to see right. We have to have right eyesight. So the making of a leader, because in the kingdom of God, when you get uh, born again, remember, you're a doer. And so the truth is, you're really a leader of something. It's true. You really are. You're a leader of something. There's something that God puts in you that you're pioneering, that you're moving into. And guess what? Other people will follow you. It's the truth. The making of a leader is a very dynamic process. I think about the life of Joshua. I think about the serving and all of that. You know, we teach about if you want your faith to grow, you have to work it. You have to be doing something. But you find people in the in the church, if they're, if they're not doing anything, they're not going to grow into maturity because equipping is hands-on. You say, well, I don't know where I fit in. How about prayer at 9 o'clock? Let's start there. <laughs> prayer is power. Prayer is power. You want to know who you are? Get in prayer. Join corporate prayer. But get, get on those prayer calls and begin to see what happens. Come on now. So it takes place over an extended period of time in various situations, which a lead which brings change to the person. Test trials, victories. We talked about that. Those who can see hear overcomers. If you can see like God, like Jesus, you can hear and see what God is saying. You are an overcomer. You're an overcomer. There's nothing you cannot overcome if you can see like God. It's true. Yeah, thank you. It's true. I love his spirit. I love it when he visits us. He's so hungry for God. So if you can see and you can hear, there's nothing that the enemy can do to you when you can see and hear like God. Because your mindset is the mind of Christ. Amen. The devil might try and knock you down, but I can see and hear like God. I see what God is. I can see like God. I can hear like God. And so he can't have me. I know I'm marked and sealed by the spirit. Why should I fear? Why should I, why should I let the devil intimidate me? right? Doesn't matter what it looks like. I already know I'm victorious because the King's in me. He's in me and I have his presence with me. You see, so it is a battle with what you see. Your trans, your road to transformation has to begin with the right vision. I'm telling you, you have to have the right vision in your heart. God's vision for you. 1 John 1, 9, Jesus overcame the world, so we can too, right? He overcame the world for us. He said, be encouraged. I have overcame. Ephesians 1, verse 3 through, you can read that 3 through 5 for the sake of time. I won't read that. But just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, right, that we would be holy and blameless before him in love, look what here, he predestined us. You were predestined to be, us to adoption as sons through Jesus Christ to himself according to the kind intention of his will. Because of his kindness, he chose you. What a blessing. Because, because of his kindness, he plucked you out. He could have left you there. Come on, but he didn't. He pulled you out because of his kindness. Wow, what a blessing. So you are the hidden. Because if you keep reading that, and I didn't read it all, but you are, you are the mystery of God. Okay, you need to read that on your own time. Ephesians 1, 3 through 5. You are the mystery, the hidden mysteries of God. And guess what? The powers of this age know who you are. They know who you are. 
Mm -hmm. They know you. Do you know who you are? Mm -hmm. So the road to transformation, I'm just going to give you these points. And each point, we're going to build a message on this. Because I'm really believing God's going to impact us. And so these points are this. The road to transformation power, number one, is having unity of the brethren. Just write that down. you got to have unity of the brethren. That's relational. It's deeper than your lip service, right? It's more than that. It's not just saying it. It's much deeper, and we're going to learn about that. Number two is, are your foundations, is your foundation healthy? What needs repaired, uprooted, or restored? Okay, that, and we're going to deal with that in, in a lesson. Number three, you got to find the breaches and the gaps. Number four, renew the mind. What does that look like? How do we get the full counsel of God? Now, remember, when we're talking about foundations. These are things that are entrenched in you. That's why we do all that deliverance in here, right? Entrenched mindsets. They're established. And sometimes God has to take the jackhammer and bust it up because it's wrong. <laughs> it was built wrong. And it's... <laughs> It's built wrong and he has to bust it up. Amen. And number five, you got to restore the altar of pure worship. Okay. We'll learn what that is. Number six, identify the strong man. What's hindering this transformation in your life? Identify him. And we'll talk about strategic prayers and warfare for that. Number seven, you have to get the strategy from the Lord. Hallelujah. God is good. And so these are different areas here that we are going to dig into in this message. Mm -hmm. Amen. Praise God. God is good, isn't he? And we need this. She's like, my hand hurts from writing. <laughs> That's good. So let's just pray. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, Father, we thank you for your transforming power. Yeah, you can just stand to your feet. We just thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We give you glory. We thank you, Father, that you're changing us. Father God, you're changing us into the image of Jesus. Deeper revelation and understanding, Father, concerning who we are and our assignment in the earth. Father, I just thank you for a fresh vision, Father. So if you're here today and you, you have never received Jesus, that's the greatest miracle of transformation you'll ever have. It's a miracle of receiving eternal life. It says in Romans 10, 8, it says, What does it say? The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith, which we are preaching, that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus says, Lord, and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Right? So that is that you got to confess with your own mouth. Nobody can confess Christ for you. So if you're here and you, have, you do not know Jesus, we want to lead you in a prayer uh, to find Christ. And if you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit, you have never been filled with the Holy Spirit or received your prayer language. We can lay hands on you to receive the Holy Spirit. It is not a hard thing to receive that powerful gift. He will endue you with power from on high. You will receive an indwelling power over temptation, power over the works of the enemy. And so if you're here today and you need to be saved, you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit, we will minister to you and lay hands on you and lead you in some prayers. Hallelujah. Everybody say praise God. Amen. And if you're watching online, you can receive Jesus. Just, just ask the Lord to come in. Just ask him. Tell him, I need a Savior. Just pray to the Father. And I'm telling you, Jesus will come. All that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. And so, Father, we just thank you today for what you have released into the heart, Father God. I just am hearing this. Um, just put your hands like just put your hand over your eyes and ask God to give you the right vision. And be sincere. 
let's be sincere about this. Father, in the name of Jesus, even, Father, as an act of faith, as they have put their hands, young people, put your hands over your eyes. Father God, in the name of Jesus, right now, that you would touch their spiritual eyesight. Father, that the vision, that they would see like you see. Father, that you would open up their spiritual eyesight, Father God, that they would see. Father God, that they would hear, that they would have the right vision, the right vision, Father God, for their life, for their families, for their community, Father God, for their marriages, in the name of Jesus, the right vision for these children, Father, that you have given them, in the name of Jesus, we receive that today, Father, we receive that today, and I pray that there would be open visions, Father, that they would see their harvest fields, in the name of Jesus, that you would show them their promised land, in the name of Jesus, uh, even as you showed your children their promised land, Father, show us that which you have called them to in the name of Jesus. And we give you glory for that impartation, Father God, that they're going to see themselves the way you see them, Father. In the name of Jesus. And we give you glory, Father. I thank you for the breaking through. I thank you for the breaking through. There's some of you, you're going to open your mouth on the job and in the marketplace, and you're going to feel the Holy Ghost. You're going to feel the Holy Ghost. There's people waiting for you to open your mouth. And so we bless, we bless them, we bless them, we bless them. Father, we thank you for many souls being saved, healed, delivered, Father God. I thank you, hallelujah, that you're going to snatch people out of the fire. Father God, you're going to use these people to snatch them up out of the fire in the name of Jesus. And we give you all the glory, Father. Great is your faithfulness. Hallelujah. Just bless your people today. Bless your people today, Father. We just cover them in the blood as they fellowship and then leave this place today. In Jesus' name, amen. So the giving, if we just thank you for your faithfulness in your giving. Hallelujah. Next week, we are going to do a mission report and we are going to show you uh, what God has been doing through your obedience to give. Amen.